I didn't know what art form I would eventually land in. I thought I might be a writer. I, I wrote poetry at that time. I, I loved literature. I loved painting. So I, I hadn't settled on, on exactly what form it was going to take, but I always knew I would be some kind of artist. The minute I took my first roll of film, I just really felt so excited internally and because I had always loved art and had not been introduced to photography and I was just on fire with it. And I started doing self-portraits right away and that continued then when I started my master's degree, I continued that journey of self-portraits. This is one of my early favorite ones it's of me standing in the snow and with a bird cage and the door is open and this came from a dream I had had the night before and I woke up you know really fearful because I couldn't remember whether the door of the cage was open or closed and I guess that was really a metaphor for my not knowing about whether or not I was a caged bird, or whether I was now free. I was very attracted to um, exploring the moments in time uh, that I felt were had a psychological edge, uh, where I was really probing uh, my own inner journey. In Washington, I lived near the National Cathedral, and I used to go, they had beautiful gardens there, and here I am in front of one of the doors. Uh, and, you know, you notice there's a key on the door now. I was attracted to places that had kind of a, an energy that was ambiguous. I think I admire all artists who really delve into some part of their own psyche and bring that to bear on their work. Because you have to be obsessed with what you're doing as an artist, I think, to really do work that is going to stand the, you know, the test of time. Uh, friends had encouraged me to do a book of my own self-portraits, but because I had been teaching, I was very aware of the fact that women during that decade had been drawn to investigating themselves in new ways. The whole area of women's uh, rights had sort of opened up for them. And so that's when I did the, the book uh, called Inside Self-Portraits. In those early days of self-portraiture, I was, you know, I just was drawn internally, you know, just obsessed with getting up in the morning and getting out and photographing. And I never knew exactly what it was going to be. I just knew I had to get out. And I loved Dunbarton Gardens, this beautiful gardens that was open to the public in Washington, D.C., where I was living. And, uh, here I am walking down the pathway, and it's a double exposure. And 
In that period of time, I of course I didn't couldn't afford to have any assistance. I was uh, uh, teaching, uh, and I, you know, every day that I had off, I went out shooting by myself, and I would put the camera on a tripod, and then I would have 13 seconds, like 12 or 13 seconds, to run and get into place, and then wham, ah. Uh, of course, now, since I've used the studio a lot, I have a lot more options, but that the immediacy of actually having to set everything up, oftentimes in nature, I don't know, it just, it felt like an extension of my whole being, and it was just something that just came from me spontaneously. It often has this kind of mystery or haunting quality or intimate quality. Those are, those are all words that I've seen written about my work. And I, I think it's true. I, I was introduced very early to the unconscious. I grew up on the grounds of a convent and my parents worked there and we were enlisted to be in a lot of their pageants. And, you know, I couldn't wait to get away, but as I look back on it, it was a rich environment and it really gave space to the unknown and it allowed me to be comfortable in that zone, that, uh, that mysterious zone. idea for doing something with this wonderfully shaped shell that I've been drawn toward and I feel when I hold this shell I, I feel this or, organic nature power and so it is something that I I feel very comfortable and privileged to hold actually because it it, it feels like it has a, a, a mysterious power so Terry what I'm thinking about is actually putting it over my face okay and so that you see the eyebrows okay so if you can line that up for me so I want to what I do with my models is try to put them in the zone and so I do some deep breathing with them often so I'm going to do that to myself take a big deep breath that energy coming up through my feet all the way up through the top of my head and just good. Okay. okay, let's try some slow shutter speed to feel the energy of movement here. Okay, here we go. We're going to test this. So, oh great, this looks good. Let me go and look. Oh, I like that. I really like that. Now that's actually more of what I'm looking for. Yeah. I like sort of that, that that movement gives it a much more mysterious, otherworldly feeling, which is what I feel I want to do with this. Great. Okay. Let me get back on my uh, marker. my marker here. Okay. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Now I'm going to have fun. <laughs> I'm going to have fun. All right. Here I'm we go. Fix a couple of hairs real quick. Okay. Thank you. Oh, it's so nice to have a wonderful <laughs> assistant. And Terry and I have been together for three years and we are like family. Okay. Here we go. Okay. seeing it as this magic wand now. I love this because it's so, it's really, you don't know what you're getting until you look at the film. Oh, I love that. Oh, so beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at the light there. It's really nice. That's a, gr oh, look at this one. You can see it's, it's, what's so exciting about it is that you, you have an idea that you start with and then as you, as, as you work, things happen that you couldn't have even imagined, like that. Let's see. You just gotta do something. Yeah, yeah. But that one was just—it looks like fire. 
I've, I've always imagined the shamans in ancient cultures, you know, doing ceremonies with shells and because they did infuse them with such power. When I first started photographing, I had no idea who I was. I was young, I was barely 20. And so for me, turning the camera on myself to explore not only photography, but who I was on a deep level. And you know, it was a time of inner turmoil because I really had made a lot of decisions early on, for example, to get married five days after graduation and you know, to go to a new city and and I really was troubled about the decisions I had made and was exploring who I really could be now that I had been, uh, you know, shown a much larger world and I was growing as a person. So what I'd like to do is just center myself and sometimes I, I put my hand on my heart to, to um, connect. When I work with my subjects that I'm photographing, I always, after we get through all the technical issues and get everybody, you know, to a place where they're ready to, to collaborate with me on a portrait, I always ask them to, you know, put their hand near their heart and to just feel their breath going in and out. This breath means spirit and so I like to try to show the inner spirit of my subjects. So in order to do that I have to go on a journey with them of connecting with my inner spirit. So I do this with my subjects too. And then sometimes we just breathe together quietly. And then I will say something like, okay, let's hands down. Think about something that means a lot to you and then just look in the lens. That was fun. That was fun. Let me, let me take a look at those. Yeah. My sets, my photo shoots are, ha are, are fun. I do all the hard work in advance and then when we actually get there, it, it should be fun for everyone. Not just haha -ha fun, but this sense of discovery, the sense that we're doing something that might uh, be memorable in some way for both me and my subject. It's a heightened awareness and it, it's exciting. I like it when it's a little messy. Here we go. Look at me. Beautiful.
love that. Oh, that's good. When I was using the Polaroid Studio, which I did for 20 years in New York City, I would come with, you know, just a couple assistants and bags full of fabrics and props and uh, other, you know, materials. And we'd have a couple large tables and I'd put out all of my special things. I'm, a, you know, one of these people who loves to collect different types of things. And... I would have several subjects coming each day because it's very expensive to rent the Polaroid studio. And then each sheet of film, even back then, was $55. It's now $200, you know. So you were standing next to this refrigerator on wheels, this humongous camera with a cable release. If you can imagine the camera on wheels, let's pretend she is the subject, okay? Yeah, they're all right. Like so. okay. okay. And here is the camera on wheels. All right, it's big, as big as me, oh my right? Gosh. And there is a lens here. Looks like okay. this. And make the leap. If you look at this, it was so it's two people, and I had this idea of having these these arms come into Are the you okay? Yeah. Okay, but, hello, we have to have hide you behind there, okay? So here was my concept, right? Okay. And then here's the <laughs> okay. camera, right? Hands behind, right? Well, or, or, you know, I would have wrapped you in something, right? But black okay. is good. Okay. Black is good. Yeah. All right. There will be dogs. So there then, dogs. here's the Polaroid camera. Here's the lamp. <laughs> oh. Look at this lens. Oh, okay. Perfect. Here's the lens. Okay. Oh, I need somebody to hold the lens. Hey, come on over here. Lens holder. Lens holder. We need some of these young people. You're the lens. Okay. So I have a cab cable release from the lens. All right. Right? No smile. I know. I know. This is tough. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah, my Look. hands are tired. There we go. Are you okay? Here I'm just kidding. I'll be okay. Proud yeah, you're fine, you're fine. No, she, you got to be taller. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Take a breath. That's right, you know. You have to be a director, guys, those of you who want to mm -hmm. do portraits, right? This is great. This is wonderful. Is it all right if I touch you? That's okay. Thank yeah. you. All right, okay. So what I'm looking for... <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> okay. So what I'm looking for is something timeless. Close your eyes for me, please. Thank you. She's going to burst out. Nothing like having okay. an audience for this, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to put it like this. There we go. <laughs> this is so fun. Okay, here we are. Okay, here we are. Here's my cable release. I think we're all set. Okay, perfect. Don't move. Will you look right here? And now look here. Like, like, like. So easy. A reenactment. Yeah. But the great thing Good about acting. the photo yeah. is, is look at the Iris, skin. You're great. <laughs> There's no Photoshop. They had not invented Photoshop. Wow. Her skin was that perfect. That yeah, was perfect. Really. <laughs> it's hard to believe, even for me. When I went to New York, I had never done an assignment. I had just done personal work. I got the cover of the American Photo Magazine in 1986. And my phone started ringing by, you know, art directors all around the world, actually, because they saw a style they had never seen. And, you know, a photo editor's job is to find a new photographer that has a different vision and they want to use them. So all of a sudden I was thrown into doing these assignments, having never done one in my entire life. And 
there was a fusion between my personal artistic projects mm -hmm. and the assignments. I was very lucky in that there were many, many uh, wonderful opportunities where that fusion happened. I had a wonderful assignment from Esquire, and every year they do a special issue on women in Hollywood, and, and they hired me to do it one year, and I went out to L.A. and photographed one of my favorite people, Jodie Foster, who was so interesting to work with because totally professional. She had been, you know, looking online at my work. She came in, and she, you know, right away said, okay, boss. What do you want me to do? Should I take off my clothes now? Because she had seen that I had done a lot of nudes. And I said, no, but I'd love to wrap you in some fabric. And she said, okay, I'm yours. And I loved that. I loved meeting these people uh, and getting to talk to them and, and connect with them. Willie Nelson, of course, who told me, you know, drinking and drugs had, had kept him young. <laughs> Ed Harris was fabulous. I mean, he is such a fine actor and such a fine human being. And B.B. King, he was fabulous. I went backstage to photograph him. I literally had very little time because he was coming off stage and his, his um, agent said that he was really too tired um, for the photo shoot that um, we had scheduled, but he ended up just telling me all the stories about, you know, his guitar and how it was his best friend and how, you know, he, he's a joyous human being. James Taylor completely, you know, just seduced our entire group of assistants and the day we were shooting this for uh, a story that Premiere Magazine was doing and he came in all smiles and such, I think you can see it, sort of a radiant human being. Mm. He just lit up and so wonderful. You could always tell a great person the way they would treat my assistants in New York. Those memories are, are wonderful. I had my opening for my book, Light Warriors. We were at the International Center of Photography. And after the opening, we're getting ready to leave. And my assistant said, so Joyce, what are we going to do next? And I'm like in a state of shock, having just finished this opening of this long, you know, two, three year project. And I just, without even thinking, I'm like, let's go to a hundred. And then the next day, it just was clear to me, okay, let me investigate what it would be like to take on what some people call the third act of life, that time from 65 to 100 that is, we're finding a very creative time of life and an exciting time um, for many people. And so it just happened organically. I was interested. Doing the book Wise Women was not only my most successful book, but it was probably the greatest learning experience because I went to 10 different cities and photographed 300 women from all walks of life and all nationalities. I loved that project. And without doing that, I would never have been able to move into this age zone with such confidence and with such insight. Just being completely open to anything happen. Surrendering. I'm going to surrender. <laughs> the wild self is coming out, right? The dance of freedom. The dance of surrender and freedom. <laughs>